Hey YouTube, Hill Country Husker. Appreciate you guys checking out my video. Thanks for all the subscribers. Appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. Just want to say thanks for that. Today I want to talk about the four steps to emergency preparedness planning. Now forgive me, I'm going to be referring to my laptop screen here so you'll see me look away quite often while I go over this. But again, it's four steps to emergency preparedness planning. Uh, step number one, phase number one if you will, um, learn about your community. Learn about the potential hazards uh, that are in your area. Um, could be that you live near a nuclear reactor. Could be that you're in an area that is susceptible to earthquakes. Uh, possibly you live um, along the Gulf Coast area where they have hurricanes. Uh, possibly you're in a large uh, urban area where there's potential for civil unrest or possible terrorist attacks. Um, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, understand your community, what the risks are, and also learn about what services are available um, in the community in which you live. There, there may be some, some agencies, um, Red Cross, something like that, that can help you identify. Okay. Um, once you've identified what the hazards are that are in your community, um, understand what are the warning systems that your community has. Uh, I know growing up when I was a kid, uh, I lived in a tornado prone area and so they made sure that they had tornado drills. Everybody knew what the tornado sirens sounded like. Um, they did a monthly test of the sirens so that they made sure that they worked, everybody heard them, and uh, they knew what was going on. Um, understand what your community has. How do they communicate disasters? Okay. Also, along that same line, how do you communicate a disaster? If there is uh, something happens, how do you communicate it with your with your family members? Now, most people uh, will probably be separated uh, during the day. You know, people are at work, kids are at school, traveling. You get what I'm talking about. How are you going to communicate something has happened? Think about that develop a plan. Anybody with special needs uh, in your family or in your immediate area, work through that issue as well. Anybody have pets, um, that's something else that you have to consider. You can't just let, let, your, let your dogs go feral. That creates a whole other problem depending upon what the, what the emergency situation is. Uh, you don't want to have your bird in the cage and die of starvation. You know, what kind of mean son of a bitch are you? So think about these things. Make sure that you have a plan in case something happens. Consider the pets. Consider people with disabilities. Consider small children. Work all this into your preparedness plan. Okay? When you've done that, you need to develop your plan. Um, discuss with your family members, your friends, that are involved, whether you're in, with a mutual aid group or whatever, um, discuss what you're going to do if this happens or that happens. Um, what do you do with an, for an evacuation? Do you have an evacuation plan? And again, uh, like I said previously, chances are going to be at work, kids are going to be at school, whatever. How do you come back together? You know, you talked about communication while everybody's separate. How do you bring everybody back together? Another important, um, uh, helpful and important part of this is to um, establish an out-of-area contact. Uh, there's somebody that lives, obviously, out of your area. Uh, probably somebody that lives out of state. Uh, so that if something happens in your area, phone lines are going to be busy local calls are going to be hard to make. Um, however, it's more likely that you'll be able to get a 
long distance line. So you can call somebody in another state and they can then act as your contact. Okay, if people are separated, hey, you know, call Joe up in Denver and he'll help communicate communications on people that are separate, separated and you know, allow them to come back together. Um, also, because you are separated, you need to agree, everybody needs to agree and understand and know how to get to a, an alternative location. Uh, it's called a rally point. Uh, just like when you have an emergency within your home, let's say it's a fire, uh, everybody has an evacuation route out of the house and they've got a rally point, uh, whether it be um, the tree in the front yard or you know the, the back gate on the fence, some, some point. Okay, same thing if there's an emergency situation, everybody's scattered, what's your rally point for everybody coming together? Okay, could be your house. You know, could be a, a public place, could be, uh, could be your bug out location. I'll leave that up to you, but think about it and, and work that into your plan. Um, you know, have, it's, it's also a good idea to have not only a local, but also a regional. I mean, people, people may be traveling. Um, and again, if it's like your bug out location, then that could be like your regional. You could have a local, which could be your house. And then your regional could be your bug out location where people that are traveling or that are out of state or out of the area know to come there. Okay, so uh, part of that. Now, third point, third phase uh, is to is to get prepared. Um, make sure that everybody has everybody else's contact information. Make sure that you, if you have small children uh, that might be in school, that they know how to dial your number. Everybody, you know, other family members, numbers that they that they know how to do this, that they know how to get in, in touch with people. Um, teach young children how to, how and when to dial nine one one. Okay, uh, you don't dial nine one one to help. You know, there's a recent story in the news where this little girl called nine one one because she couldn't get her pants on. How cute is that? But really, that's not what nine one one's for. Help children understand when and why and how to dial emergency services. Um, keep your records up to date. Keep your insurance up to date. Make sure that everybody in your family knows how to turn off your utilities. If you have gas that comes into your house, it's real important you know how to shut that off. If, if something happens, you want to shut that down. Uh, knowing how to turn off the water, know how to turn off the electricity is important. Um, obviously, have supplies on hand. I mean, if, if you're a prepper, you know that. You've got food, you've got water, you've got emergency cash, you've got, you've got your stockpile, you've got your bug out bags. I'm not going over that, you got that covered. But have it covered, okay? Uh, get training, you know, get fire, firearm training, first aid training, learn skills. Okay, that's real, real important. Um, if you have to evacuate, you need to have um, alternative evacuation routes. You know, just like when you go back to the house again, if there's a fire in the house, you need to have two evacuation routes out of every room. Well, same thing, if you're having to evacuate bug out from your primary residence, have at least two, maybe three evacuation routes. Make sure everybody knows them. Have maps on hand. Don't rely upon, you know, um, you've got, uh, you know, your phone. Uh, don't don't rely on that because depending upon the emergency, phone might not work. If it's uh, an EMP attack, chances are, your smartphone's not going to work. Have maps, paper foldable maps you can hold. Nothing else. Get a piece of paper, draw out your map, draw out your evacuation route with directions. Make sure everybody understands it. They, they, they know what the plan is. Um, review your plan. Practice it. This is the fourth phase. Make sure that it changes as circumstances change. Okay. 
Um, you may have a different job when you start this plan and you need to adjust your evacuation routes or your get home route or whatever it is. Um, conduct the drills. Make sure that everybody knows the steps that they're going through. Check your equipment. Make sure that if you're, if you're stockpiling food, which I hope you are, that you check your expiration dates. That's real important. Make sure you rotate your stock, obviously. Um, make sure that you have batteries, you replace batteries not only in your smoke detectors, but also in your flashlights, your radios, whatever the case may be. Another thing that's real important, I think you heard me speak about this before, is make sure that you have a full tank of gas. If you're not stockpiling gas, which a lot of people do, and you can do that safely, um, make sure that you've got gas in your vehicles. As a rule, we try to not let our vehicles get below half a tank at any time. Uh, we can get just about anywhere we need to go on half a tank plus what we have always stockpiled. So um, there's no sense in running your vehicle gas down to zero, filling it back up. Keep that updated. Keep it. Keep keep your tanks full. Is what I'm saying. Keep them topped off. Um, talked about your insurance. That's all good. Um, In an emergency, make sure that you're aware of where the emergency is. Uh, you know, we talked about alternative routes. It could be that your route goes through where the disaster has happened. Uh, you know, if it's a if it's a terrorist attack and your route has you going through downtown, well, that's where the terrorist attack was. Well, obviously, you're not going to go that way. Okay, uh, so make sure you take all of that into consideration. Um, this is kind of up to you whether you want to share your plan with others um, you can do that obviously it's probably good if once you've established an out of area contact that you kind of let them know I mean they may be part of who's coming in as well so um, leave it up to you if you want to share that information but for sure uh, these four phases are real important make sure that all of your family members know um, what the plan is, what the routes are, what the communication process is. Um, real important. Anyway, just want to kind of run through that with you guys real quick. Uh, again, what we've been talking about is the four steps to emergency preparedness planning. Um, lots of uh, thought needs to go into this. Write the stuff down, get yourself a notebook, Having an emergency preparedness notebook is always a good idea. Take notes on things. I love watching YouTube videos and I take notes and I learn from others. Uh, like I've said before, I do these videos because I'm trying to teach myself. Uh, I'm not an expert on this by any means, but uh, when I go up and I learn and I see something, I like to share because it, it also helps reinforce it with me. Uh, I can learn from these four phases. So that's why I do this. Uh, again, four steps to emergency preparedness planning. Um, that's what it is. Would love to hear your comments. These are just my thoughts. Appreciate it. Hill Country Husker.